people on with Neil Mellon and we're at the Isle of Man Food Bank. Um, Neil, you put out a, a, a sort of urgent request today, which is almost unbelievable, but the, I know the world we're living in is now gone topsy-turvy. Yes. You've got a lot of product here, but you're missing what everyone else seems to be stockpiling at the moment, which is loo rolls, UHT milk, all, all those sort of things. Tissues, uh, rice pudding, and a number of other foods. Dry products, although I know you've got a fair yes. few things, yes. but loo rolls and things like that are really Just, urgent now. Yes, right? which is the first time in seven years that we've put a, a, an appeal for toilet rolls. But when everybody's taking them off the shelves, um, people need them for the house, they're store, storing them and keeping them, and as a result, nobody's sort of sharing it further down the line. How's it work then? Can people go in and buy one for you and bring one up here, or do you rely on the companies that usually give you the excess? Or what? No, the gifts such as uh, toilet rolls and uh, Kleenex tissues, that type of thing, they'd be purchased by the public and either put into trolleys up the likes of ShopRite or the co-op or brought directly to us or handed into uh, churches that collect on our behalf. I mean, for the non-initiated, and I've had a tour here, you might think you're, you're well equipped with everything, but clearly this is a side of the... the most people have no idea what goes on at your food bank yes. and how many people you serve. Can you explain it? Because I mean, obviously people always say, well, why are you giving out that sort of food and other things? It looks like almost luxury stuff. Yes. How do you, how do you kind of um, do that one? Well, we take a lot of pride, Paul, in what we do. And when you and I first met, which was about seven years ago yeah. when we started the food bank, uh, we put out 150 food parcels in that first year. And I remember the media being full of... Uh, that headline, yeah. 150 food parcels, shouldn't be a need for it in the Isle of Man. Yeah. Today, we're putting out approximately 150 food parcels a week. And it's only when you begin to think through it like that and think, well, what do we put into those boxes? If we provide every household with a litre of milk, we need 150 litres of milk per week. Mm. We're dependent on the public for that. If we look at beans and say we put in four tins of beans or a mixture of beans and spaghetti, usually we give a family four tins for the week. Well, there's 600 tins of produce that we need. It's, it's what we, I mean, we've talked about before. People think the Isle of Man doesn't have any sort of problem and you're just saying it's clearly there and it's growing. It's yeah. growing massively, growing massively. But I mean, this isn't people just on benefits. I mean, you, ha you process everybody. No one just walks in here and walks away with stuff. You, you, you have to make sure that that person is the right person for, for needing the help, right? Th that's what we have been doing, and um, that's what I believe is the right thing to do. Now, there are people who would challenge that and would say, mm -hmm. um, we should have a system more like England where we can send people down to the food bank with a, e effectively a poor person's identifier, I'm here for my food bag, and give me that. Now, in England, as far as we know, uh, you get three days supply of food for the week. And I, we believe you get that twice, and then after that you have to wait a few months before you can come back again. Right. Here in the Isle of Man, we interview people, we take a history of what's pushed them into need, why they're in that crisis, and what's coming into the house and what's going out, so that we can identify what's left for them to spend on food. Yeah. If you're talking to somebody who's got £200 a week left, we say, well, you might need help, but it's not food, because you actually have enough money to cope on. If we're talking to families, and we often are, who have got £40 to £50 a week to manage with, say, a family of five or six, they're not going to do it. Yeah. And that's why we gather that information. But also it allows us to feed back to the public why there's problems with food-related poverty and how that gets managed. And we take a very holistic approach to it. So it's not just about food for us. Our whole aim is to get people back to being independent and in control of their lives and the food then becomes a tool. So we come up with an action plan uh, for these people. We then we'll see them weekly as they come in to pick up the food parcels and then after a set period of time, either four or six weeks, we'll review the situation. Mm -hmm. If they're independent, they've got through that crisis, that's the end of the support and they'll tell us that they can cope from that time. For some families and individuals, they need a bit of more support or they need alternative forms of support. So we will look at how we can help people who have both f uh, food poverty but also fuel poverty. So we work in different ways. We help with 
uh, some gas bills or electricity bills, but we don't have a lot of money for that, but we'll help in that fashion. But we're practical, we'll um, have coal delivered if you have a coal fire. We've even gone out and got wood and delivered wood into houses with log burners when there's nothing else. Well, Neil, we haven't even touched half the things I want to talk about, so we'll have a part two of this interview.